Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. If you own one of these, and that is a camera with a removable lens, then you're very lucky because obviously you can whip this lens off, you know, revealing the sensor here. And generally, most cameras have a mode where you can deactivate the actual lens, you know, the electronic lens, because simply with a piece of tin foil, I did an experiment with this, you can hold it over the end of the camera like so, and with a pin, poke a little hole in there and you've got yourself a pinhole camera. It's fantastic, you can do all sorts of things with it. When you um, make your uh, pinhole, you can push the, the, the tin foil closer to the lens or further away from the lens and that will sort of adjust the uh, size of the image. As you move the pinhole around the camera like that, you can then change how it's being cropped on the sensor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to 3D print myself something that will allow me to mount this a lot easier than just holding it to the screen. So if you're going to experiment, you can hold this up to your um, sensor, sorry not screen, the sensor, do a little pinhole and see how that works. But if you want to take it to the next level where you need something a little bit more permanent so you can take those pictures better, you're going to need to use something like a lens cap, or in my case, I'm going to use a 3D printer to print myself uh, a micro four thirds sort of adapter ring that'll allow me to glue the tinfoil to it. So let's see how that goes. <laughs> So there we go, the end result. I haven't cleaned off the uh, this bits of uh, raft material, but you can probably see it is an actual Micro Four Thirds compatible ring. I haven't actually tried it yet. So I'm just gonna give it a quick blow, make sure there's no bits and bobs that are likely to fall into the camera right away. Don't want that to happen. Right, so, oops. That's pretty convincing. Oh. There we go. It's actually locked in really firm. Fantastic. So now with this sort of flange, I can stick some tin foil on and I have a permanent rig. Let's try, I'll, I'll just set that up and then we'll see what it looks like. So I'm just going to place some tin foil over this flange. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to very carefully put an elastic band around the edge to keep it light proof. So if I turn on the camera, pitch black. So very caref carefully, and you want to do this with a very fine pin if you have one. I, I don't to hand, so I'm going to be just use the very tip of this. I've made the tiniest hole, and I'm not sure you'll be able to see it actually, but we'll try. Okay, you can just about see it here. So I'm going to try to set something up so you can see, there's the back office computer. So this camera is actually turned on, but I'm going to increase the light levels in here. You might just be able to just about make out a picture in the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this on a tripod and take a picture of that area because it's going to need a long exposure. You can see my camera now is doing a countdown and that's because it's had an exposure of 60 seconds and the GF3 seems to take an equal amount of time to process the resulting image. So it's counting down from 60 seconds. So hopefully uh, in about 10 seconds time we'll be able to see what it can see. Now remember this dot, this tiny pinprick is the only uh, aperture to let light into this camera. If you think of that big lens letting in all that light, now you've got a little tiny dot. Oh, it just clicked. You can imagine it's going to take a long time for enough light 
to hit that CCD sensor and actually build a picture. It's just done it now, I heard it click, so we can have a look. And here we go. So hopefully you can see that. So you can actually see it. it's clearly uh, a picture of the back office behind uh, the PC area, yeah? And um, there's something quite magical about this. You know, you're literally making your own lens. It's just, it's amazing. And you can experiment with this. You can make the whole bigger, make the whole smaller. I'll just give you a general rule of thumb though, right? The further the hole, your pinhole is away from the sensor, the more, um, I think it's called telephoto, the more zoomed, zoomed in the lens is, yeah? So really, ideally, the tin foil would be on this side to make it really wide, to give you that widest thing. So you've got to be careful of how it's going to be cropped. You can see from the picture that it's not too bad. This is quite usable. I would think this is probably, I don't know, maybe the equivalent of a 20 mil or something like that at the moment. So it's, it's still a very usable thing, especially for outdoors. And you want to be using this outdoors because you'll need a lot of light to be able to take care of half decent pictures. I'm going to post the picture of this one anyway. I'm indoors now so I can't and it's dark outside because it's winter so I can't really take any other uh, pictures but I'm just going to show you this you know this sort of weird hazy ghosty image which is just as I said our very first image and um, how it's got some magical artistic properties here and I haven't tried other things I mean technically you could put more than one pinhole here and you'll get I don't know maybe overlapping interference patterns ghosting images all sorts of tricks you can do so please have a go at this I'd love to see your resulting pictures please leave comments and subscribe if you want to see more uh, tinkering with things in general but I'm going to be doing a lot more camera lens tinkering now also of course remember this is 3d printing too um, Let's see if we can get this lens off. I'm going to push the button here. Yep, it comes off. There we go. Nice and clean. There you go. How about that, eh? 3D print your own pinhole camera lens. Let me know if you want the model for this um, Micro Four Thirds uh, adapter. It's actually even got the little um, notch here to lock it in. So I didn't even I didn't even realize it had it in the model when I lined it up but that's why it locked nice and perfectly and it, the camera detected the lens was on. So thanks for watching.